morning all. I think I've done scripts and videos over and over and over again, and I never felt right. This has been since uh, coronavirus has been growing <laughs> and been praying. So this is what I wrote last night late. So the shadow of things to come. If the Old Testament is a shadow of the new and the new first church, the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is a shadow of things to come, and Revelation shares a glimmer of things not yet to come. Then, it only makes sense to review what happened in the past to catch a glimpse of things that we should look for. So let's take a look into the past. Jesus came the first time under the Roman rule. The Jews were a populace with their own man-made forgotten about Moses' laws, but the new man-made added laws, you know, the laws to design their spiritual beliefs and ideologies made by man and not God. There was a social Jewish con construct, one that was acceptable to all. If you follow those mandate new laws and you held favor in the people's eyes, you became a good Jew. Jesus had a tax collector as one of his disciples. He called upon fishermen. He healed a harlot, a demon-possessed woman from the other side of the fence. He ate with a common man and called the religious leaders serpents and vipers. <laughs> he healed someone on Shabbat and did not have a place to lay his head, sort of how we might view a homeless person in these days. Someone who talked about things that religious leaders would be insulted by a cult was the view of the Jesus crowd. They didn't have the internet then or newspapers to spread the deception. They used social construct, social pressure to get people to do what they wanted, and it was looked upon as good. That is, if you followed that social construct. Here's the definition, a few sentences. A social construct is something that exists not in an objective reality but as a result of human interaction. It exists because humans agree that it exists. Interesting, huh? The theory centers on the notion that meanings are developed in coordination with others rather than separately within the individual. A social construct or construction concerns the meaning, notion, or condemnation placed on an object or event by a society and adopted by the inhabitants of that society with respect to how they view or deal with the object or event. For example, the coronavirus. Now I'm not putting down the coronavirus, people are getting sick, but still. In that respect, a social construct has an idea that would be widely accepted as natural by the society. Well, that's how it works. This is how we can put the Japanese into camps and ignore the roundup of the Jews during the Holocaust. This is how we can beat up a person wearing a Trump hat or take away free speech. Oh, they don't call it that. They call it something like fake news, but not the Trump form of fake news. <laughs> Yet they played on that term. This is how ISIS could just burn up and kill a ton of Christians while the rest of the world watched and really didn't do anything at all. Do you remember the news talking about that? No. In fact, they banned all videos that talked about this because, why? It was racist. How does that work? <laughs> What happened then before the first coming of Jesus Christ is happening now and for some time actually it has been happening. Let me explain a bit deeper here. Where have the religious leaders an acceptable part of social construct? Where have they been? Who has changed God's word into something else? Like it is okay for men to be lovers of men and so on today. He walked away and through time after the first church, slowly and slowly and ever so cleverly changed and took away the real teaching of the Bible by not talking about it, <laughs> preaching about it, and created a new religious social construct, an acceptable place to be. 
We have rock concerts. Some say not to read the book of Revelations and ignore prophecy. And they tickle the ears so that members will come back the next week and tie that good old 10%. They don't talk about anything controversial because it could push people away and new people won't come. Crank up that music. Scream as loud as you can. Jump up and ja down. Jiggle and bark if you have to. If they need that Learjet to spread the word. In the old days, during Jesus' time, did they take care of the widows? Did they let the poor sit at the front of the church or the synagogue? Not really. It does not happen in the church either. Okay, so the Jews changed the command from Moses in the Old Testament and created a new one by adding over 600 laws. The Christian church changed ideologies from the first church and they were changed by man and not God. His word is everlasting, by the way. Jesus is the word, the Son of God, King of kings, and Lord of lords. In Matthew 23, Jesus was speaking to the multitude and his disciples. First the scribes, or those who are scholars, like we have in the church today, sit in Moses' seat, huh? That was verse 1. I'm going to paraphrase a bit here, but this is what they, the religious folks, um, want you to observe, to observe and do. But do not do after their works, for they, the religious folks, say and do not. Get that? They don't do what they say. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. You know, like a chain and yoke, a ball and a chain and a heavy suitcase. <laughs> they, themselves, the religious leaders, will not move them with one of their fingers. Verse 4. But all their works they do to be, what? Seen of men. And they make broad their, and I can't pronounce this word, it's phylasteries. It, those are the boxes of scripture that they put on their arms. They still do that today. They take like this band of leather and a box of scripture. And why the tassels on their garments long to be seen by men, you know, to show how holy they are. They love the place of honor at banquets, you know, the front seat. And to be the only one to speak in a crowd on a microphone while the crowd sits and listens. I'm kind of doing that then and now. Kind of like they love their own voice. And then they love the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to be called, but wait, rabbi by others. Don't you see that in the church, and really so many of them, while those who are hungry are not fed, both spiritual and physical, those who are naked are not clothed, they are not taught forgiveness and righteousness. So they run around spiritually naked. Do you, if you continue to read to Matthew 23, I would behoove you to do so. From verses 13 through 29, there's the famous seven woes to the teachers of the law, those Pharisees. Jesus used the strong word hypocrites. It goes on to verse 34, and I'm sending you prophets and sages and teachers. Jesus says that is future tense from the moment while he was speaking at that very time. Some of them, you talking to the Pharisees, who are utterly insulted by this time listening to Jesus speaking, will kill and crucify the others. You will flog. All this will come on this generation. He is talking to and about the first Christians. Well, you know that happened. You know the story. Yet with all his miracles, kindness, and truth, they did not know the scriptures enough, those who were scholars, the Pharisees, to see that their Messiah was right before them. We should not make the same mistake today. We all know that in Matthew 24 and 25, Jesus talks about the signs of the end times and the destruction of the temple, which happened in 70 AD. Don't be like the Pharisees, unprepared and ignorant 
of the signs. In Romans 11.25 it says, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. 2 Peter 3.16 He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. I say, don't fear. In Ecclesiastes 5.7, much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. In Luke 1, 7, I put 174, it doesn't make sense, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear. That's where our focus should be. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy, what? Fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that in keeping with faith. Now, this is the fear of the Lord, not the fear of man. Guys, strange things are happening as far as the signs are concerned. To watch the signs, unlike the Pharisees did during the first coming of Jesus Christ. The global mandate date to stay at home, keeping the people in place and pacified Instilling what? Fear with repeated and basically the only news you can find is on COVID. <laughs> I'm not downplaying COVID, okay? We're following all stuff. Many believers failing, falling or falling for the Torah today, forgetting the Bible and putting themselves under, again, the old laws. They're binding themselves in chains, following the laws made by man. The economy is crashing before our very eyes. Right now we are in a band-aid mode. In America, all other non-emergency surgeries are stopped except for the killing of babies. They're allowed to continue. <laughs> in Israel, many Jewish leaders are believing that the Messiah will come very soon it's been in the news in Israel. The joining of a world leader, a kumbaya kind of thing is going on. This is the social construct. What is acceptable? Practicing of sacrifices, once again, are, is going on. This is the shameless killing of animals to take away sins. The mockery of Jesus Christ who died once and for all. For years, the slow, drifting words of RFID chips are now experimented on impoverished nations to allow the unknown poor to be known, all for human justice, so they can travel, buy things, and receive medical benefits. Already, this is going on with billions in India. Almost the entire nation is identified. There's facial recognition in China, Facial recognition when you travel overseas and come back to America. Fingerprints, smile prints, and eye prints. This is to control the masses monetarily, physically, and spiritually. Why? Do you see the answer yet? Do you see it coming? I had a dream of the belt of truth that I shared in the video. You wrap it around you, hold it close to your heart, and keep your lamp lit and filled with oil. I had a dream of the tsunami, which I had in a video. It's the people, the nations and tongues crashing down, but we are saved by a bubble of protection. The armor, the blood of Jesus Christ, the belt of truth. Without the belt of truth, which is the first to be put on, you're not gonna understand one thing. The literal hearing of angels I heard on February 5th, 2020, for 10 minutes driving home from work in my car? What was that all about? The tones could not be matched, and believe me, I tried to sing with them. <laughs> what happened in heaven that day? 
Do you see it yet? Do you see what I'm talking about? Are you the few walking on that narrow path today? Stay in the Word. Bask in the Word. Bask in the Father and in Jesus Christ. It is now time to be strong and to stand tall. There are birthing pains. First they start far apart. They already have been starting for a while. You know, if you remember, the birds and the fish all dying and falling from the sky and all these odd natural disasters. But then later, birthing pains come closer together with breaks in between. So we get a breather, so to speak. Then they come closer even yet. There are less time for those breaks. And then, all of a sudden, Jesus comes. We do not know when, but we do know the signs. You be a Pharisee or a fisherman.